Hi there, and welcome to another video of Made with Cables. My name is Mark, my handle on the forums is Andro, and today I'll be continuing with our ongoing series of data visualization inside of cables. So I'd like you to pause the video and just click on the link underneath. That will take you to this webpage here from NASA, where there's some nice educational homework for students that I found. So this webpage explains uh, the data and shows that the Global mean sea level has been measured from 1880 to 2013, and that's kind of represented here. So today I'm going to show you how to create something like this inside of cables. So I want you to scroll down and I want you to click CSV files so you can download this. I've already downloaded it. So once you go to the downloaded um, data and you extract it, it'll look like this. So you've got like a full CSV file and you've got it split up into 20 individual CSV files. So this is the beginning 1880 and this goes all the way to 2013. So something I want to show you is if you like click on the first one and you click and drag it to Chrome and let go, it'll show you a preview of the information of the data, which is really handy. So the first entry is time and the second one is GMSL, global mean sea level in millimeters. So here's the year with some decimal numbers behind it, and here's the level. A really handy thing. So, I want you to create a new um, cables uh, patch, and I want you to just pause the video and make what you see here. Great, let's continue. So first of all, we need to just create a basic graph. So there's uh, one or two videos that I've covered stuff with arrays. So I'm gonna create an array op, and I'm gonna put that here. I'm going to put it on normalized and I'm going to put it on 100 values. I'm going to click inspect and this now goes from zero all the way up to 0 0.99. Great. So now I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to make an array pack free op. Okay. This op needs a trigger. So I'm going to pull that from over here. Um, so X is going to be this part. Y is the height where we'll map our data and Z we're not interested in right now. So I'm going to plug the output of this into Simple Spline, which is going to draw a line on the screen, as you can see. So I'm now going to connect an array subtract up, and I'm going to subtract 0 0.5. And as you can see, this centers the line. I'm now going to grab an array multiply up, and I can use this now to make the line wider. Let me put it on three. So I'm now going to um, I'm going to just plug this into why? And as you can see, we get this. So this array is filled with values from 0 to 1. So this is just like a pure linear graph. Let me make one more. And I'm going to make its length the same, like this. So this outputs the length of the array, and this makes it that length. I'm going to put a number, 0, and this is the Z component. OK, so we're going to map our data into this part Y. So first of all, let me just show you how to simulate random data. So I'm just going to grab the random numbers array up. And this is just going to give me a bunch of random numbers. Now, if I'm going to plug it in, it's not going to work. And I'm showing this again just so you can get into the habit of it. This red dot pops up. Arrays do not have the same length. So I'm going to get the length of the array from here. And I'm going to plug that into here. Voila. So now I'm getting random values between 0 and 1. So I'm going to put it on minimum minus 0 0.5, max 0 0.5. This is just a great way to get something on the screen which resembles some data. Quick, painless, and easy. OK, let's go over here. So now let's really dig into what it is we want to do. So if you followed the previous tutorial video, we have to get the data into um, into cables. So that's really easy. So I'm not going to work with the full data set, which is all 20 of these put together, because I just want to show you one or two of the tricks today. So I'm going to grab data set number one. I'm going to click and drag it into the cables browser, and it'll say here, drop files to upload. I let go. It uploads a file, the CSV, and it creates a converted JSON file. That's the thing I'm interested in. But I want to do this with the other two as well. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to grab number two. And I'm just doing it slowly so you guys can see what's happening here. And then I'm going to go to free. There we go. So that's how I've imported three separate CSV files. OK, so now I need to press escape and get the CSV array up. Pass CSV files as an array. 
you're going to press F11 to go to full screen. So this now needs a CSV file. So I'm going to go here to File. I've just clicked the op. And I'm going to grab this one, csv.json, the converted one. I click. The array now fills up with values. And if I use the Inspect icon, I can see everything here. So what I want to do now is I want to get everything from GMSL millimeters. So let me just get rid of this. I'm going to pull out the array output. I'm going to type in get value from array of objects. OK, now it expects a key. So I'll go back to this array. And I click and drag. Hopefully you can see that. Do Control C to copy. And I now paste this into the key. Now look, if there's a spelling error or there's a mistake, the array will have a length of zero. If it's correct, the array will fill up. And now I only get the GMSL values. So this is great. But I'm not going to see this if I plug it in. Why? The arrays do not have the same length. This has a length of 78. This has a length of 100. So what can we do about this? Well, we pull out the array from here, and we grab the array length up. And this tells us how long an array is. So I'm now just going to grab this, and I'm going to plug it into here with this array length. Now, we don't have the error anymore, but now we don't see anything on the screen. Why is that? Well, if we inspect the contents here, these are really big numbers, minus 181, minus 134. So that line is just 25 screens below us. It's really just very far out of view right now. Now, we could multiply it. I want to just show you the, the bad way to do this by a really small number. And I mean, like, really, really small. And as you can see, that's the data, but it's not easy to manage, OK? So now if you look at the, the contents, the numbers between minus 1 and 1. So there's a far better way to do this. So let's get rid of array multiply. So first of all, I'm going to grab a map range array up. Map values in an array from one range into another. So here I can give an old min and an old max, and then a new min and a new max. So I want to map the values from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. But how do I find out what the minimum and the maximum is? Well, that's nice and easy. We pull out from here, and we grab the info array up. Get the min, max, and average values from an array. So I click Add. And this op now tells me the minimum value is this, maximum value is this. So I get the min, and I plug it into old min. I get the max, and I plug it into old max. There we go. Now, this is great, because we could get um, an array of any kind of numerical data now, from 0 to a million, from minus 300 to 400. And this would always remap it to minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. I could do minus 1 and 1 to make it bigger. I'm just going to keep it like this so it's more visible. So this is great. This went pretty quick, pretty painlessly. If I inspect this array, we just looked at all the data from 1880 to 1886. But we have those two other arrays. So how can I join them together with this one? Well, that's actually really, really simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to paste it here. So I want to merge this array with this one. So first of all, let me just load everything. So this is 0, 1, 0, 2, and 0, 3, before I forget. So this has a file 0, 1. This also still has it. So I click here, and I now go to the 0, 2 CSV JSON file. I go here, I click this, and I go to the 0, 3 CSV JSON file. So what I want to do now is I'm just going to disconnect this just so you can get into the habit of how this works. I want to merge this array with this one. And once they're merged together, I want to merge them again with this. So we just drag this out, and we type in array merge. It's really simple. Array 2 is placed behind array 1. As you can see here, 0, 1, 2, 3 is one array. 4, 5, 6 is the other one. When you merge them, this is what you get. Really simple. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to plug this in here. And now my new array is 156 values. OK? So now I'm just going to copy and paste this again. I'll move it over here. And now I'm going to get this one and plug it in there. And now we've merged all three arrays together. We can see that we've got 234 values. So this is our new array. So we need to plug this into array length, because the length of the array has changed. 
We now need to plug it into info array so we can get the new min and new max. And then we plug that again into the map range array. Let's just move it over here. Move this all up a little bit so it's cl hopefully clearer and easier to see. There we go. Two straight lines. There we go. So now we've got 234 um, array values mapped out here. And as we can see, the sea level dropped down here, but now it's slowly but steadily increasing. You don't have to do this. You could just pull in that full data file and just work with this. But I just wanted to show you how you could work with multiple arrays. This array here could be 78 long. This one could be 32. This one could be 46. And it's just a really quick and easy way to stitch this information together. OK. So let's now say that I just want to look at a piece of this um, data. So now I'm seeing 234 values. But say I only want to see 12. So I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to grab the array chunk object. You, you, you pull out a chunk of an array, basically. So this is going to be my final array. So I'm going to grab those and plug them in here. And I'm going to get that, those merged arrays, and I'm going to plug them in. Everything's going to disappear, because this array has um, a length of 1. So let's start pumping that chunk size up. And as we can see, we're grabbing data out of the array. So I'm just going to put it on 36. And now if we use begin index, we are scrolling through this one big array here, but we're only looking at 36 values at once. Now what you're going to see is you're going to see it fluctuate with it going up and down because the min and max values are changing because they're only looking at what's in the chunk. Okay, But this is just a great way to just take a look at a piece of an array. Imagine you've got 2,000 um, 2,000 years, and you only want to look at 12 years. Array chunk is just a great way to put in chunk size 12 and then look at that data. So I'm going to put this on, say, 0, and let's put this on 128. So this is a great way to just grab a piece of data. Now, let's imagine that uh, I'm going to have this move and change. Um, actually, let's just put it on 16. It's a little bit blocky, right? Like it jumps. So how can we smooth that out? We've got a really good app for that. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to type in smooth array. Smooth array needs a trigger. So I'm going to pull this from over there. And what this does is it smooths out jumps in values. So if I now click on array chunk and I move through the array, as you can see, it looks smoother now. Things kind of like they're not popping and snapping. So I could put this on a higher number now, like 32. I could go to array chunk. And I can move this. And as you can see, we can get this really nice, stylish look. And I'd advise you just to play around with this op. You could give it different values uh, for increasing and decreasing um, values. And then you get like really nice, responsive, snappy, animated values out of it. We can make the chunk size bigger here. So you just got to play around with this and just get something out of that that you like. So we can now go here to the clear color. I could change this to something a little bit more white and red. I can go to the basic material, and I'm just going to make this black for now. So another thing we could do is we could put points on each uh, point of the data here, and that's really easy. So we're just going to grab the point material up, and then we're going to grab the point cloud from array up, and we're just going to plug this array in. Watch this. And now we get all these points. I'm going to put random size on 0. I'm going to turn on scale by distance. And now I'm going to turn the points up. I'm also going to make the points black. And now I'm going to make them bigger. And as you can see, we've now got points here. If I would go to chunk and put this on, say, 128, we're going to get a lot more of them. Let me just put it back on 64. So the great part is now we can just move with chunk through this data set. And the points and the splines, they just move around, and it looks really stylish. Just play around with the settings here to get it the way that you like. And let's not forget, you're in 3D space here. So if you want to give a little bit of that meaning to people, I can go here underneath the orbit controls. I'm going to grab a grid. And now I'm going to turn the spacing down to, say, 0 0.2. I'm going to put the number on 30. And a cool little trick here is I'm going to click this. I'm going to create a transform. And I'm going to copy this grid. I'm going to make something that looks a little bit 3D. I'm going to plug this in here. And now if I'm correct, I'm going to rotate. Uh, 
on the x-axis by 90 degrees. And now if I use the mouse and click drag with orbit controls, you can see we have this data now mapped in 3D. So there's a whole world of possibilities with what we can do with mapping it and animating it and moving it. So that's the end of this tutorial on how to go further with data visualization inside of cables. I'd advise you to take a look around the internet, find different data sets, learn how to um, extract meaningful data from them and turn them into something that you like that's pretty. This is a pretty basic look, but you gotta learn to walk uh, before you can run. So I hope this video has been educational and informative. If you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them under the video below or to post them on the forums. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Bye.